are glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. And now, here's Charles Caps. All right, we're talking about grace through faith, the grace of God. The fact that God's grace is greater than all sin. And the Apostle Paul says in Romans, the fifth chapter, verse 20, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, that as sin reigned unto death, even so, even so might grace reign. In other words, it took the place of sin. Grace swallowed up the sin. Now, while we're there, let me just take another little side trip. Do you remember when Moses was in the wilderness there and the children of Israel, they were complaining and they said, we're going to all die in the wilderness. Now, God had said to them, it's going to happen to you just like you say in my ear. And then they said, we're all going to die out here in the wilderness. And snakes came among them and bit them and they died by the thousands. Moses went to God about it, and God said, Make a brass serpent and put him on the pole. And he said, It'll come to pass that whosoever has been bitten or affected by the snakes, if they will behold the serpent on the pole, they shall live. Now, I used to read that, and it'd make me so mad. I said, God, why did you put a little lamb on that pole? <laughs> Why did you put a snake on the pole? He did it because that snake represents Jesus swallowing up the evil. The same is that rod turned into the serpent. That's a type of Jesus becoming sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That serpent on the pole was Jesus. It wasn't a lamb because he became sin for us, to deliver us, so that sin wouldn't reign unto death anymore, but that the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus would make us free from the law of sin and death. And you know what happened? When they looked and beheld that brass serpent on that pole, they lived. They were healed. And that's a type that we can understand today. If you've been affected by the old serpent Satan, if you look at Jesus on the cross and behold what he did, the thing that has affected you from the old serpent Satan will lose its effect on you because of the gift of grace. You're beholding the gift of grace. God's willingness to use His power and His ability on your behalf, even though you don't deserve it. Now, brass is also symbolic of divine judgment. And it means that what Jesus did on the cross rendered the old serpent harmless and ineffective. Now, you know, we don't believe in snake handling. <laughs> but if we had a brass serpent here, nobody would be afraid of it, would they? The Bible says that Jesus paralyzed it. Divine judgment rendered the old serpent harmless and ineffective. If they would behold. See, that's a type. That's an Old Testament type of what we were going to experience in this dispensation. By beholding what Jesus did on the cross, we enter into the grace by faith. You can't get into it any other way. You can't work your way into it. It is by faith that we receive it. Now, in 2 Peter, the third chapter, let's go there right quick. 2 Peter, chapter 3. Now, once you understand, and I want you to get a hold of this, because it'll help you in all your study of the Word of God. Once you understand that grace is more than just unmerited favor, it'll help you understand a lot of the things in the Bible. 2 Peter 3 and verse 18. Peter says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grow in grace. Grow in God's willingness. 
You know, that's one of the problems of the body of Christ today, that people get saved, all right, but they never grow in the grace. See, you have to grow in the grace of God. You've got to grow in God's willingness. God's willing that you be saved, all right, but He's also willing that you be healed. He's willing that you be prosperous. He's willing that you be filled with the Holy Spirit. He's willing that things go well with you on this planet Earth. But you see, sometimes because of experiences and bad experiences that people have, they go to believing experiences instead of the Word of God. See, we need to grow in grace. The Apostle Paul then in 2 Timothy 2, turn there with me makes a statement that will help you get insight into this. He says to be strong in grace. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in grace that is in Christ Jesus, or that is in the Word of God. How many of you know that Jesus was the Word of God made flesh? Amen. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. If the Word was with God and the Word was God, the Word is still God over every situation today. The Word of God is still Lord and God over every situation. And he says, be strong in the grace. Be strong in grace. Be strong in God's willingness. Somebody said, well, yeah, I know God could heal me if he was willing to. Well, now that person's not strong in grace, see. You need to be strong in grace. Be strong in God's willingness. You know, someone could stand up here, if the richest man in the world stood up here and said, I could make you a millionaire, every one of you in here, and never miss it. Well, if he's the richest man in the world, well, you'd say, well, he could sure do it all right. But you wouldn't get too excited about it unless he's willing, would you? <laughs> and that's the way a lot of people are. They say, oh, I know God's able, but do you know he's willing? It's not enough to know that God's able. Somebody said, oh, I know God's able to heal me. But will he? Oh, I believe God's able. Well, now the devil believes that. And he's not going to get healed. You're going to have to be strong in grace, in God's willingness. See, somebody said, yeah, but you just don't know. You know, I kicked the cat this morning. I got mad and talked ugly to my wife. And I just don't think that God will heal me. Hey, man, you forgot about grace. You're trying to live under the law. Somebody said, well, I'll tell you one thing. I've got four gold stars for going to Sunday school. Never missed a Sunday in 14 years. And I don't know why God won't heal me. I can tell you why. You're under the law. You're trying to merit favor with God. Let me read to you what the Apostle Paul says about the fellow that tries to merit favor with God. Go with me to Galatians, the third chapter. Y'all still out there? Amen. <laughs> now, let's read something here. In Galatians 3, verse 10. Let's back up a few verses. <clears throat> verse 8. And the Scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham. You know what gospel means? It means good news. He preached good news to Abraham, saying, In thee shall all the nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Now you want me to interpret that for you? <laughs> if you're going by the works of the law, you're under the curse. That means that if you're trying to get your prayers answered because you've been so good and you've gone to church and you haven't missed a Sunday, then you're trying to get it by merit and not by grace or not by faith. You're trying to do it by your works. And he says you're under the curse. You don't want to be under the curse because under the curse you get what you deserve. Now, somebody said, well, now, I just deserve better than this. You don't want what you deserve. You better stay away from that. <laughs> you better stay with the grace of God and the mercy of God. Can you see that? I tell you, it's good news to know that you can be strong in the grace of God. Now, let's look at this. Verse 10, for as many as are of the works of the law 
are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by works. Oh, no, no, didn't say that, did it? The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Now, let's include something here. Allow me to do this. The just shall live by grace. Now, remember what we read in Romans, the fifth chapter? It says, by faith we have access into the grace wherein we stand. So if we live by faith, we're going to live by grace because it's by faith that we have access to the grace of God. You will never have access. Now remember this. Always remember this. You will never gain access to the grace of God through works. You'll always be under the curse of the law. And that means if you don't keep the law to the letter, you're going to get what you deserve. And you don't want what you deserve. <laughs> I'll tell you, this grace stuff is good news. I don't know whether you get anything out of this or not, but I am thrilled with it, I'll tell you. Praise God. God bless you. I do appreciate you joining us for the Concepts of Faith broadcast today. Before I leave the broadcast, I want to remind you that all this week we have CD offer number 7227. That's CD offer number 7227. It's called Grace Through Faith. Two CDs for $15 plus $4 postage and handling, total of $19. Now, in this series, we talk about the grace of God in a little different fashion than you've probably ever heard it taught before. You remember in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse 6 says, For without faith it's impossible to please God. Now, why is it impossible to please God without faith? Because without faith, you can't enter into the grace of God. Now, Paul reveals that to us in Romans, the fifth chapter. He says that the way we have access into the grace of God is through faith. And let me remind you the definition that the Holy Spirit gave me several years ago. He said, grace is God's willingness to use his power and his ability on your behalf. You remember Paul said, be strong in the grace of God. Not in our own ability, but in the grace of God. It's important to understand that it is through God's grace. In Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 8, a familiar scripture, For by grace are ye saved through faith, that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. Now, it's through the avenue of faith that we're saved by grace. By grace you are saved through faith. And it says it is the gift of God. Now, he's not talking about faith being the gift of God. There is a gift of faith, special faith, but that's not what's being referred to here. He's talking about the gift of grace. And this is brought out further over in the third chapter, verse 7, where Paul says, according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me. At CD offer number 7227, it's called Grace Through Faith. Two CDs for $15.00 plus $4 postage and handling, total of $19. We have a toll-free order line, 1-877-396-9400. Until tomorrow, this is Charles Capps reminding you the enemy is defeated, God is exalted, and Jesus is coming soon. To order the product offered today, call 1-877-396-9400 or write Charles Capps. P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. A complete list of CDs, books, and DVDs are available online at charlescaps.com. Through the website, you can listen to this radio program again and subscribe to our podcast. This broadcast is sponsored by Charles Caps Ministries and our listeners in this area.